Welcome back. Republicans are unveiling a counteroffer to President Biden's two and a quarter trillion dollar spending plan. This new $568 billion proposal is focusing only on infrastructure, with nearly $300 billion being spent on roads and bridges, more than $40 billion on rebuilding airports, and more money for railroads, water facilities, and public transit. Democrats are calling the proposal a non starter. Joining me right now is Wisconsin Senator on the Budget, Foreign Relations, and Homeland Security Committees, Ron Johnson. Senator, it's great to see you. This morning. Thanks very much for being here. Why do you think the Democrats are calling this plan a non starter? Good morning, Maria. Uh, because they're operating in a 100% partisan manner, uh, you know, the good news I listened to your previous guest uh, for the Republican plan, you wouldn't have to borrow any money. You know, when we passed the $1.9 trillion a most recent COVID relief package, we still had a trillion dollars of the $4 trillion uh, we authorized in 2020 that was still unspent. Uh, of the $1.9 trillion COVID relief package, $721 billion is spending in fiscal year 2022 and beyond. And so what I would suggest is we carefully take a look of, uh, you know, whatever we've already passed as COVID relief, figure out what has not yet been spent and spend that money in infrastructure. This economy is, is already taking off. And as uh, Mohammed was talking about, inflation's heating up. And we need to be careful about that. So from my standpoint, you know, I'm all for infrastructure. You know, our roads and bridges have been ignored far too long. But uh, we've already over-authorized uh, spending. So let's repurpose that amount of money. We don't have to borrow more money. We don't have to further for, uh, mortgage our children's future. Yeah, I mean, at some point, all of that borrowing will create uh, unrest. And markets, you know, haven't focused on it yet. But when they do, it sort of causes a, a cycle. But, but Senator, I want to ask you broadly about the, the, the agenda, because it seems that, the, look, the Democrats are in control. They are the majority in the House, the Senate, and running the executive office. And they're jamming through as much as they can. You know, you had this so-called COVID relief bill at the beginning of the year, $1.9 trillion, which was only 10 percent related to COVID. Now you've got this two and a quarter trillion dollar plan. They're calling it infrastructure. Only whatever it is, 12 or 20 percent of it is actual infrastructure. They want to pack the Supreme Court. They want to turn D.C. into a state. Uh, they want to raise taxes by some $4 trillion. And they're getting it all through. How do you see things? Are they going to just use reconciliation to get all of this through and jam it through while they can? Yes, they're enacting their radical left-wing socialist agenda. It's what uh, people like me were warning America about prior to the November 2020 election. And, you know, what's frightening about this, Marie, is people are already suffering from all this borrowing. If you're a retiree uh, and you're on fixed income, what kind of return are you getting on your savings? And if inflation takes off, you know, those same retirees, they're going to be harmed. People in the, in the lower end of the income spectrum are also going to be harmed. So there are real consequences to all this deficit spending and our, our growing debt. Yeah. Over the near term, we are going to likely see a sell-off in the markets when Joe Biden confirms all of this. One of my sources just sent me a note, and he tells me that the dividend rate will also nearly double for anybody uh, with an income up to $1 million. The capital gains tax rate and the dividend tax rate could decouple for the first time since 2003. Does that mean if you own stocks of companies that pay dividends, you're going to have to pay almost 40 percent for any gains you made on that because the company paid a dividend? That's what it sounds like they're trying to do. And, of course, yeah. that'll have a a very negative impact on the stock market, which will, re which will reduce the wealth of America, which will further contract or you know, certainly put a, a drag on our economy. And so President Biden, his administration are basically reversing all the positive policies of President Trump, a more competitive tax system. They're going to start overregulating the economy again. You take a look at what, what they're doing on the border, dismantling what actually worked to reduce the flow of unaccompanied children and family units uh, that are subject to those depredations, that inhumanity that you were talking to, uh, talking to uh, Jason Chavitz about. You know, and, and what really needs to be pointed out is the, the Biden administration, Vice President Harris, she's on my committee. They were fully aware of the human toll of their border policies, but they're reversing all the successful policies of President Trump. And I hope America is paying attention. 
Well, it doesn't make any sense. You went down to the border. You saw this stuff up close and personal. They tried to tell you to stop taking pictures. Now the vice president, Kamala Harris, is emphasizing that it's the root causes of the migrant surge. She says it's a complex issue. She's listing a number of factors making people flee their own countries. Listen to what she said yesterday, as if this is new information. Watch. We're looking at drought. We're looking at uh, what's happening in terms of food scarcity as a result of that. We are looking at, therefore, a number of issues that also relate to poverty, extreme poverty, and also um, there's violence, obviously, coming out of those regions. So, so far, the administration has just been building new facilities to house everybody rather than stopping the actual flow and going back to return in Mexico and getting that wall built. Your reaction to what you heard from the vice president and the fact that she's not going to go to the border, she's just going to meet with the heads of the triangle. Well, she is the last person I would put in charge of uh, border security because she was completely uninterested in it when she was serving on my committee. And so the Biden administration is letting out, uh, you know, no-bid contracts to their political friends uh, to, again, house migrants so that you can't take the pictures. But, Maria, over the last 28 days, we've apprehended, on average, about 5,900 people per day. And that's a caravan a day. And this crisis is getting worse. But, again, the, the Biden administration knows full well exactly what the impact of their policies are going to be, the, the, the human sex trafficking, the fact that— uh, they sell children. We, we, held, we held uh, hearings where a child was sold for $84. You know, they're, they're thrown out oh of rafts God. when they're interdicted by uh, CBP patrol boats, and, and children drown. And again, the Biden administration knew this. They were warned by the Trump administration that if they reverse those policies, this crisis will uh, take off. And so we've always heard about the push yeah. factors. Th those have been there. But it's the pull factors. It's, it's the incentives, the, the, the fact that uh, all the presidential candidates on the Democrat side said they were going to offer free health care, not deport anyone. That's what sparked the latest crisis. And this crisis is worse than anything we've seen before in the past. And it's man-made. Yeah, no, it's I, I could see created that. by the Biden yeah. administration. It, it, well, it's created by policy. You know, he reversed all the policies. I totally understand. Look, the media is, is enabling this, uh, that, you know, not telling the American people what's going on. Politico told its staffers yesterday, don't call it a crisis. But what are you going to be able to do in the Senate? I mean, the House passed legislation yesterday to make Washington, D.C. the 51st state. The final vote was 216 to 208. It was all along party lines. Senator, what's going to happen there in the Senate? Are you going to be able to stop this? Are you going to be able to stop H.R. 1? Are you going to be able to stop some of these radical policies that are impacting American families? Well, I know Republicans are all praying for and encouraging the good health of uh, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, and hopefully they will honor their promise to honor the traditions of the United States Senate and maintain the 60-vote threshold for passing this very partisan uh, legislation that uh, the House is passing and that the Biden administration is uh, certainly encouraging. So, it, it, you know, really, our, 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 our freedoms, our democracy, in many respects, hang by a thread, and that thread is uh, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema. So, again, hope that they honor their promises. Has there been any policy out of this new administration that has been helpful to the American people, in your view? I haven't seen any. You know, let, let's face it. When you spend trillions of dollars, you're going to help people. There's no doubt about it. But the problem, with, and this is why we're $28 trillion in debt and will be in $30 trillion in debt by the end of this fiscal year, is it's always popular to give away uh, other people's money or money that we don't even have. Yeah. So people love the benefits and the, the, the impact, the consequences just aren't showing up yet. But when you start seeing signs of inflation, we start realizing how, how horrible this is for seniors on fixed incomes, uh, you know, the yeah. consequences of these uh, policies will come home to roost. All right, Senator, thanks for your leadership on all of this. Senator Ron Johnson, we'll see you soon.